I have talked about him in this podcast before, but let me just highlight his story. This man has been working as a teacher all his life. He is coming from my village, and a couple of years ago, this man retired from work. And now he's walking around the streets not knowing what to do with his life. His uh, quote-unquote savings from National Social, Social Security Fund and his pension is given to him and there is absolutely nothing to show of it. That is a classic example of the, something that I've been talking about called a re-entry where you've been operating on a high, especially in terms of success, and then all of a sudden you are hitting a low or you're hitting reality. And we've been saying that the low is not necessarily failure. It is just you coming back level to how normal things were from a particular high. The question is, how do you handle such a situation? How do you handle those things, those events happening to you on an occasional basis? And that's what we want to close discussing today. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. During the course of this series, I've used several analogies and several examples, actually several life-living examples, on what re-entry really does mean. I gave you an example yesterday of Arsenal winning the 2003 and 2004 Championship English Premiership, and this is a soccer team in England, and they won it in an unprecedented way in that they went the whole season unbeaten. The coach said that one of the toughest things to do, because they clinched the title before they could finish their matches, one of the toughest things he did was to encourage these people and inspire them and motivate them to see the big picture of finishing the season unbeaten other than just sitting down and celebrating the trophy, which they'd already won and wrapped it up. It was a tough thing. What Arsenal was experiencing is what I call the re-entry. The coming back to reality, the moment just after a success, the moment just after a triumph, just after a victory, and that can happen to just about anyone. Maybe you're a runner, maybe you're an author, maybe you're a business person, an entrepreneur, you've launched something. The moment just after your triumph is what I've been calling the re-entry, that we need to manage that re-entry because re-entry has a side effect, it has a repercussion. In that you're longing for the glory, you, you're longing for the magnificence that you are experiencing when you're exerting yourself while working, and now it's not there. It's not there because the project has been shipped, the book has been printed, the finish line has been crossed, the marathon has been won. And that aura is no longer there. That aura of victory is no longer there. You're back to normal. How do you handle normal? And I've told you about Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong goes to the moon. And this man, I really have no clue. Maybe I need to do a thorough research about him. He goes to the moon. One of the biggest goals you can ever set it is to go to space and set your foot on the moon. Tell me, when you come back on the face of the earth, on the surface of the earth, what are you going to do that is bigger than that? 
That is a classic example of reentry. And so we need to learn some of the things we need to do because reentry, like we've said, is not something that happens in your twilight of life when you're retiring. It's not something that happens once in a blue moon. It is actually something that plagues visionaries, probably on an occasional basis, maybe every quarter, maybe every month, and so on. And so you need to reboot. For example, someone like me, after I've written an article and it's published by, let's say, Influensive, which is an international publishing company online, they publish that article and they've done five of my articles before. What do I do? Because that's a moment of triumph. That's a moment of significance to me. And now re-entry comes and with re-entry, I need to move on from that previous victory to manage this moment where there's no article I'm working on anymore. There's no idea that I'm working on anymore. That aura that I hate, that performance that I hate is already gone. How do I I capture myself in the moment and restructure myself so that I can give it another go. One of the things that we said you need to do, number one, is to take a vacation, take a break. And we say that a vacation or a break is not something that you necessarily need to take at the end of the year. It's something that you can take after something has been done, after a triumph, a victory, after you've crossed a line of some sort, after you've shipped your books, after you've done whatever it is that you've done and you've finished it and it's a big thing. It's a big thing and it took a tall order on you. You exerted yourself, adrenaline was running and so on. And now it's done and it's dusted. What do you do? You take a break and then you start retooling yourself. You start repackaging yourself. You start recharging yourself and you start building momentum slowly by slowly as you pick up the momentum again. See, you cannot maintain 100 degrees, 100 percent. You know, you cannot go at top notch speed from Monday to Monday. There's got to be some kind of pattern where you're resting and you're recuperating. And you can apply the same, especially after you've shipped a major project. And then we say that the second thing you need to do, the second thing that you need to do is to to detach yourself. To detach yourself. Detaching yourself means that you have done your part and now you are letting go. Basically like a farmer who has prepared the ground, has still the farm and so on, and he has gone and he has sowed the seeds. He cannot go back and start digging up the seeds to find out if they're growing. He detaches himself in that he has done his part and now let the universe do theirs. Let the laws, the principles do theirs. The same thing with you. You've exerted yourself. You've done the project. You've done the article. You've done the book. You've done your artwork. Whatever it is that you've done, you've hit the send button. You've hit the publish button. Walk away from it. Detach yourself from it. And we also say that the, the third thing you need to do is to isolate that as aspect, that project from your life in such a way that that is not necessarily the definitive moment of your life. When Steve Jobs launches the Mac, that is not what defines him. When he goes ahead and launches the iPad, that is not what defines him. When he launches the iPod, that is not what defines him. When he launches the iPhone, that is not what dis- defines him. Those things are isolated, but the colossal success of this man is all these things that he's done. So success is measured in continuity, not in that one hit wonder. That song that you recorded the other day and it hit the airwaves and now you are failing to break through again because you are still attached and you you have not isolated yourself from the previous wonder that you did. That is number three. Number four, we said that you need to trust yourself and all these things are related. You need to trust yourself that where that masterpiece came from, there is more. There is more left where it came from. There is more inspiration, more ideas where the idea that you have just successfully executed came from. So you need to trust yourself. Stop holding on to this idea. And some people do not even ship because they think that once I have played my card, there is no card left for me to play anymore. You need to trust yourself because you are a masterpiece. You can still create and you're not a one-hit wonder. You're not here to do one thing and then just expire. You're here to mesmerize people with hit after hit after hit after hit. 
excuse me for using that analogy because it feels like it's only artists who do that but it's a metaphor the fifth thing that i want to discuss even as we come to a close is simply this and it's related to the previous things that we talked about it is about instituting a lifestyle you're living in a lifestyle not in spurts of events so that events don't capture you off guard they don't get you off guard events are happening within the confines of the lifestyle that you've prepared yourself to live and the only way you can be able to do this is to look at your life at the perspective of purpose that there is one contributory one common denominator that is making you to do these hits and these events and these victories that are separated and they're isolated there is one common denominator that ties all of those things together and it is the reason as to why you were born it is your purpose in life that is how you look at your lifestyle see if you sit down and one of the biggest discoveries you can make twain said this mark twain said that there are two most important days for a man that the day he was born and the day he discovers why he was born those are the most important days of a man and of course of a woman the point is simple once you've discovered once you've sat down and discovered why you were born for example Lawrence was born to inspire hope and enrich lives worldwide so that those guys who are down and out those guys who are weary can reach down to themselves and uncover and deploy and nurture their full potential so everything that i do is directed towards that i can do one episode and it goes viral that doesn't mean that i'm defined by that episode I go back to my lifestyle which means that every single morning I am doing an episode I am doing an infographic I am doing an article I am editing a book I am creating a book it is a lifestyle to me and in the, within those lifestyles there will be wonders there will be things that will resonate with a large number of people but constantly there will be things that will always resonate with my audience the people that I am always speaking to So I read a quote about the Bible some time back it says that the word of God is our daily bread it is not cake for special occasions so using that analogy you need to create a lifestyle of processes lifestyles of events plans this of course starts with a life of purpose a life of living non-negotiables what are those things that you must do whether you are on a high or you are on a low whether there is something major you've shipped or not what are those things that are a must for you to do what are your non-negotiables okay so that comes and covers in the aspect of you having to deal with a reentry in that you're feeling oh there is nothing else to do i already did that big project there is what else can i be able to look for you see you have come back from the moon what can i do else that is bigger than that no that what was big is just an event but your lifestyle of purpose your non negotiables they are still there successful events become the side effects of you living your purpose not the result of you of hot pursuit of those events or those projects you are basically living your purpose and this is a powerful quote by Victor E Frankel you know Victor E Frankel and probably is one of the people that I've quoted or referred to the most him and Abraham Lincoln in this podcast this is what he said about success a very common quote he said that don't aim at success the more you aim at it and make it a target the more you are losing or the more you're going to miss it for success like happiness cannot be pursued it must ensue and it only comes as the unintended side effect of one's personal dedication to a cause greater than oneself or as the byproduct of one's surrender to a person other than oneself 
That is what he said about success. And this is a common denominator. This is what connects every single thing that helps you to overcome a re-entry moment. Because at the end of the day, you are living your life. You are living your purpose. You are doing what means something to you, what matters to you. So in closing, it will be prudent for me to read Victor E. Franco on success once again. This is what he said about success. He said that don't aim at success. The more you aim at it and make it a target, the more you're going to miss it. For success, lack happiness cannot be pursued. It must ensue. And it only does so as the unintended side effect of one's personal dedication to a cost greater than oneself or as a byproduct of one's surrender to a person other than oneself. So once you do these five things and they are all related one to another, you will be able to deal with success re-entry. I'm wishing you all the best in everything that you do. Celebrate your victories, but move on and give us more victories. Give us more masterpieces. Give us more hits. Mesmerize us once again as you keep doing your life. Don't be stuck in the past because that's not where you live anymore. Until tomorrow where we're discussing something totally different. For now, bye-bye. A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.